Welcome back everybody to our next segment of our virtual tour here at CARE. We are starting with these two ladies. That one way over there, that is YOLO. YOLO was social distancing before social distancing was cool. And this one, this is Dahlia. And she really has no concept of personal space. <laughs> She's having some kind of tantrum right now. I don't know what is going on, but she is having some lamitude. So I'm going to tell you about Yellow and Dahlia and where they came from and a little bit about llamas first, or the llama family. So um, there are four animals, distinct species that are often confused, and that is llamas, alpacas, guanacos, and <laughs> vicuñas. They, may I help you? Uh, Lord. Um, so they all look very similar, but they're all very, very different um, species. And they're all part of the camelid family. So <laughs> she's just a mess. Uh, so yeah, they're related to camels. But so here's the difference between those four. Llamas and alpacas, which Yolo is a llama. She is what is known as a Surrey llama. So llamas come in all different colors, uh, color variations, patterns, and uh, hair types. And she is what's called a Surrey llama. Her hair is very um, long and silky and uh, is used a lot in knitting. Um, and uh, textiles. So she is a Surrey llama. Llamas are larger than alpacas. Alpacas are smaller, but they are both uh, domesticated animals. So people have domesticated them over the years to be of service to humans. Both of them, llamas and alpacas, were domesticated from a wild species. So in the case of alpacas, it was, she's trying to push me over. Um, so in the case of alpacas, it was the vicuña. And in the case of llamas, it was the guanaco. Dahlia here is a guanaco. So she is actually the wild species that llamas were domesticated from. Okay, we're back, sorry. I got interrupted. I had to go help clean enclosures for a while. So we are back. And we were talking about how Dahlia over there is actually a guanaco, which is the wild species that llamas, like Yolo, were domesticated from. So I wanted to talk about domestication really quick because a lot of people uh, misunderstand uh, what that word means. So domestication is not taking a wild animal, putting it in captivity or even breeding it in captivity and it becoming used to people or socialized with people, it being trained or tamed or however you want to say it. That's not how domestication works. Domestication of an animal happens over generations and generations of selective breeding. So taking an animal and breeding it so that they develop certain characteristics and behaviors that are beneficial to people. So it takes a lot of time uh, to create a domesticated animal species. And not all wild animals can become domesticated. 
uh, an wild animals have to have certain qualities or characteristics already that make them uh, able to be domesticated. Um, it, it, anywhere from the type of food that they eat to uh, their temperaments to whether they get scared easily to uh, whether they are social animals or not. All these different things uh, make an animal more likely to be domesticated. But again, it takes generations and generations of, of, of breeding for that to happen. So domesticating an animal means changing a wild species at the genetic level. So once you have a domesticated animal, they are genetically different than their wild cat counterparts. So even though they look kind of similar, uh, Dahlia and Yolo are very different. Uh, <laughs> this is the funny thing though. Um, Yolo being the domesticated species is not very interested in being around people. She is very independent, wants to be on her own or with Dahlia, that's about it. She's pretty shy with people. Dahlia, on the other hand, thinks she's a person, even though she is a wild species and Yolo is domesticated. <laughs> and that is because uh, Dahlia is pretty special. So I'll tell you a little bit about how these two came here. Uh, I don't know if you noticed earlier and it's a little hard to see right now, but Dahlia is missing something. She's missing one of her back legs. So she only has three legs. And she came to us when she was a month old. She was teeny, 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 tiny. I think she weighed like 20 pounds. Uh, she was absolutely adorable, really fuzzy and fluffy and sweet. And uh, the gentleman that brought her here uh, brought her with a broken leg. And he didn't know what to do with her and wasn't willing to fix her leg. So we called our vet out and our vet came and took a look and feeled around on her leg and thought, you know, maybe I can go in there, do some surgery, put a plate and some screws in there and fix her leg. But when he uh, put her under and went in and looked at her leg, it was so bad and so old. It had, uh, the bone had started knitting together in a way that affected her hip and would make it impossible for her to really use that leg. So he gave us the choice of what we wanted to do and we cho chose to have her leg amputated and give her a chance. She was very lucky that she was so young when this happened because she grew up and adapted to only having three legs. Uh, but she, yeah, she's a, she's a tripod. She only has three legs. Um, and then, so when Dahlia was really young, she was always drawn to all the other animals. And she's gonna come over here again because she has to be up in everybody's business. Hello, ma'am. Hi, hi. Yes, I know you're there, hi. Hi, okay. All right, yeah, she's there. Please get out of my face. <laughs> she's a mess. <laughs> um. <laughs> So when she was young, first of all, she had to be uh, bottle fed because she didn't have her mom. And for at least uh, first couple months of her life, she um, lived in the house because she had to be cared for around the clock because she had just had her leg amputated. And she was babied and pampered and <laughs> she really thought she was uh, a person. Um, in that, uh, we did that to save her life and to give her a good chance, uh, but it also kind of ruined her because she, uh, she's trying to push me again. Um, she thinks she's a person and she thinks she's the boss. Don't you? Yeah, you get attitude, don't you? Mm -hmm. She likes to spit on people and just be a nuisance. But that's okay, we love her anyway. 
Anyway, so when she was young, we also happened to have two young lions who you will meet later on, Raleigh and Zubiri. And when they were really tiny, she helped take care of them. She was absolutely in love with them. She, uh, they were with her at all times. She really loved on them, made sure that they were okay. Llamas have um, a reputation of being amazing guard animals. A lot of people get llamas to guard their sheep and goats. Um, they're very attentive animals. They pay attention and make sure that there's no danger around. And she kind of did that with these little lions. And so when they started getting bigger and were really starting to get too big for her, where it was starting to become a little dangerous, uh, we had to set ma'am <laughs> we had to separate her from them and it was very sad because she missed her her babies a whole lot and someone in the area that raises llamas heard about dahlia and heard that she was now all by herself and she is so bad she knocked my phone out of my hand so to finish up, if you will please allow me to do that, Missy, someone in the area who raises llamas heard about Dahlia and that she was by herself and they brought us Yolo. They had raised her and they said Dahlia really needed a friend. So they brought Yolo to be her friend and they live together now and they get along great. Dahlia immediately loved her. Um, thought that <laughs> it was really cool to have another llama. Um, and so, yeah, these two ladies hang out. They do their thing. Why are you stomping? Yolo's a very good girl. And Dahlia is not. Sometimes sometimes she is <laughs> all right that's enough with the llamas the llama and the uh guanaco let's go meet somebody else you guys remember baggy Everybody, meet Fire, Firebug, Buggy. You can come say hi. Hi, Bug. <laughs> All right, so Bug decided to lay down right by the fence, <laughs> which is always hard to video when they do that. But anyway. So Bug Fire is a pretty special girl. She has an interesting background. Um, Fire is a little sight impaired, meaning she doesn't see very well. Uh, when she was younger, we give all of the cats that come here, uh, we give them a round of vaccinations, just like you would your dog or your cat at home we do that so that um, they are protected from getting illnesses and the vaccines that we give them are a combination of uh, domestic cat domestic dog and ferret vaccinations and typically it goes off without a hitch no problem However, in Fire's case, there was a problem. She had a very, very bad reaction to the vaccination and she went into a coma. And uh, she eventually woke up from her coma, but when she did, she was blind. And it was really scary. And uh, we called in, we had a, an amazing are you going to try to get me? <laughs> she really tries to get me a lot. She thinks it would be very fun to eat me. Um, 
but uh, so we had an amazing, where are you going? Amazing donor who paid for some specialists to come in. Oh, yeah. She's gonna try to get me. I see you, sweetie. You may not be able to see me very well, but I see you just fine. <laughs> Hi, bug. Hi, bug. I see you. <laughs> um. He, uh, you're just going to do this as long as I sit here, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. There she goes! <laughs> My goodness. Okay. Buggy. Feel better? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah, she, for whatever reason, there's something about me that she would really, really like to get me. And she's not like that with everybody. It just happens to be certain people, and I'm one of them. I thought she was going to be calmer with me today, but I guess not. Um, uh, and then she's going to be cute. See, this is what I told you guys about before. They can be super aggressive one minute and roly-poly the next. But getting back to fire story. So she woke up from her coma. We had an amazing donor that hired some specialists to come work with her and uh, she was blind but after uh, some treatment she regained most of her sight. Uh, she has never been able to see really well but she can at least see somewhat. Um, it does seem to be deteriorating a little bit now that she's gotten older. She's 15 years old now so her eyesight seems to be getting a little bit worse as time goes on, but she can still uh, see enough to get around and she can still see me enough to want to pounce on me. While she has her back turned to us, I'll tell you about something pretty cool about tigers. So all tigers have those white spots on the back of their ears and nobody really knows what they're for. There's a lot of theories but no one's 100% sure. So some people think it is a way uh, that they communicate. They flick their ears and it's a way uh, that they have uh, body language to communicate with other tigers. Some think it is to look like eyes so that other animals, other predators do not sneak up on them from behind. Remember I was telling you about how uh, tigers, some people wear masks on the back of their head to keep tigers from attacking them in India. What do you see, bug? Oh, she sees her neighbor, Melita, over there, who we're gonna talk about in a second. Um, so again, some people think that those spots are made to look like eyes, so they don't get snuck up on. And some people think it's uh, a signaling device kind of for females uh, that have cubs it's so their cubs can see them in tall grasses they you know just watch for those white spots on the back of their dark ears and can follow them but again I mean these are just theories no one knows a hundred percent for sure what exactly they're for but we mentioned Melita her next door neighbor so when Buggy was really young and how you know initially had the, this eyesight problem. 
we happen to take in another young tiger, female tiger, who was about eight weeks old when we took her in, and her name is Melita. And they lived together for years and years. And when they were young, Melita actually served as fire's seeing eye tiger. <laughs> she really would help her navigate her surroundings. Uh, and they were together for a really, really long time. Eventually we separated them. They started, uh, Melita, I'll talk a little bit about her. She's an interesting cat. Uh, and her aggression issues, which she does have aggression issues, started to get a little too much for Fire here. And so it was just better to separate them so that Fire could be a little happier, uh, a little bit more relaxed and not so on edge because she was having to kind of watch her back all the time with Melita. So let's go say hi to Melita. The kids just got fresh water in their pools and all their toys back after we clean their enclosure. So just in case you needed a little extra cute today. There you go. Pretty girl. <laughs> so this is Melita. Hi. Yeah. So Melita is a really interesting cat. So we mentioned, oh, she's got a little tongue sticking out. work being done behind me so just excuse the noise um so Melita is really interesting because she came here when she was about eight weeks old and she came here in seemingly perfect health she was strong and healthy and looked great uh, but she had the worst was that a fly? Is that fly bothering you? Um, she had the worst attitude <laughs> we've ever seen. And she's got, just so you know, she's got some blood on her that is not her blood. She was eating. So they get kind of messy when they eat. Um, but yeah, really, really bad attitude. Uh, just incredibly, incredibly aggressive. Don't know why. She just was vicious from day one. <laughs> so vicious. Look at, look at how vicious. But just as we saw with fire, that can change really fast. Really, really, really fast. Um, so yeah, she uh, just bad attitude. Um, don't know what the problem was. She hates men, absolutely hates them. Usually on tours, we have to skip her enclosure, um, particularly if there are men on the tour and particularly big men, big tall men. She will go absolutely berserk if she sees a bunch of men on a tour. So we a lot of times have to go around her to give her her space. She's not a huge uh, fan of kids either usually pretty good with women although she can uh, just snap at a moment's notice um you never she's very unpredictable her moods are very unpredictable the men thing there is one exception uh one of our senior volunteers has known her since she first got here and she absolutely adores him his name is jd and he can usually calm her down when no one else can. She just loves him. But other than him, all men typically are evil <laughs> to her. Um, 
but she's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, she is so, so, so pretty. She's got incredible markings, beautiful chuff or snuffle, and she really can be very delightful. But you never know what mood she's going to be in on any given day. She is very relaxed right now because they have been eating. So her belly is really big. <laughs> she's got a huge belly right now. They're all kind of out for the count. Because as we talked about before, they eat a whole bunch at once. And then they digest that over several days. So we've been, they got fed uh, in the last day or so. And today we're cleaning up. So when we go in, all of the cats have a lockdown area. I'm not sure if I've talked about that before or not. But they have a smaller uh, area that has a door that can be pinned and locked and they go in there we close the door behind them we check it and then we can enter their enclosures and clean up all of their poo and bones and stuff that they they leave that they don't want to eat and then they have a nice new clean enclosure when we're done so we're gonna clean her in just a second because she has got some nasty food over in the corner that I am not showing because it's not something you want to look at. <laughs> but we're going to get it out of there and get her all cleaned up. And she's just going to nap the day away. Alright, well that does it for today's virtual tour segment and we will see you next time. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and get notified whenever we have a new video up. Uh, please share these with your friends and family, people that uh, may need a pick-me-up, may need a distraction from everything that's going on. We hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. Follow us on social media for more about the cats every single day and all the animals. And of course, visit our website to learn more about their stories. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.